you judge the flesh, then you know you're not going to be able to, you know, see the see the wolf inside. You know, you see a sheep. And that, that's the whole uh, point. That's why Jesus was saying that they're wolves in sheep clothing. And, you know, someone who's speaking the truth on them that, you know, this is the spirit of Antichrist. They're not of God because they judge the flesh. They're not going to see it. Like, hold on. They said Jesus and they give to people and go to church and all these things. But, you know, it just comes down to, you know, Jesus said, you know, wolves in sheep's clothing um, and no marvel. Um, as Satan disguises himself in light of an angel, so will his people. And it's just that clear, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. They'll look just like them. They're in the church, teaching, leading. It's that simple. Let's go to First John. I'm going to go to um, chapter 4. First John, chapter 4. And is verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try, another word for that word, try is test, test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Already three times, you know, I've, I've read the past three verses referring to false prophets. This is how subtle Satan is. A false prophet, they look like they're of Christ, and they sound like it. They open each. You know, they aren't necessarily coming with triples look just like um, a lot of them. You know, they mean well. They're Christians and lead people to hell and live for Satan, though. But with ignorance and not, um, you know, you're going to have cults, and they're still doctrines of devils. So for people who believe things like Jesus isn't God, um, you know, it's damnable heresy. You know, this is what Satan teaches, and he can twist the words and, you know, Greek words and stuff, you know, to, you know, to confuse people and, and teach that. And so I'm saying, you know, a lot of them mean well, but, you know, still die levels and, you know, be like an angel. And, um, you know, that's something I dealt with. You know, I came from a cult, and, you know, they denied the, the Trinity and, and what have you. And, you know, they're they're great people, you know, I'm not here to bash them wherever. But, you know, I knew a little bit about, you know, cults and things, but yeah, here I am in a cult myself and you know, so I pray for them, you know, you know, I'm not gonna speak on cults right now, but you know, gotta know the word because they they come to attack the, the deity of Christ and, you know, issues on, you know, baptism and salvation and, you know, just damnable heresies, um, you know. For the most part, I believe, you know, um, Orthodox Christianity has it right, you know, and what's the accepted truths of the word. And then there's going to be, um, you know, certain denominations. There are some traditions that are practiced that need to be um, exposed and, and stopped because just because everything is accepted, you know, some doctrine or tradition doesn't mean it's right. But, you know, when it is right, Satan is also going to oppose that, hey, um, this is actually wrong. So, um, you know, test the spirits, you know, that that goes with, um, you know, not everyone says, Lord, Lord, it's of Christ, you know, you know them by their fruit, but people, you know, in their own minds, they're, they're saying, um, you know, we can't know, or he said Jesus, so we saved, she was in church yesterday, so she saved, test the spirit, wolves in sheep's clothing, transformation of uh, an apostle, God attest the spirit. And that's the Holy Spirit. So, yes, judging is biblical. Let's go to Second Corinthians chapter two, and I'm gonna start in. Actually, it's First Corinthians. Sorry on that. It's First Corinthians chapter two. First Corinthians two and I'm gonna read uh, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, referring to the Holy Ghost, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but with but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. 
but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Okay, so, you know, with the Holy Spirit in you who leads you in all truth and knowing the word, lining all things up with the word, you know, actions and things, um, testing the spirit, you know, you can reach the point where, you know, you're you're in Christ and mature enough that, you know, you can you can judge the spiritual things, you know, um, spirit of discernment, you know, who's of God, is this doctrine of God, um, you know, he judges all things and judges of no man. That person judges of no man. So the Bible even says, you know, you're going to judge angels, you know. So, you know, you got to go to the Word. Um, I wanted to speak on that on that verse about, um, I had mentioned it, but I didn't touch on it. Um, you know, the cast the first stone where people say, you know, um, you know, it's judging um, and it's wrong to point out wrong. Okay, well, I want to speak on that a little bit. Um, at that time, you know, this was before Christ um, had resurrected, of course, he's on the earth, you know, before Pentecost came and, and uh, brought, brought forth the, you know, the, the church age, which we're in now. Um, you know, these people were in the, the law of Moses. So, you know, Jesus, he had to fulfill the law of Moses. So there were certain sins that were worthy of, of death. You know, they would stone you, things like adultery and breaking the Sabbath, you know, um, you know, were death, the penalty. Okay, so they could have stoned her, you know. And that was by law, you were put to death. So it wasn't not a sin to say something's wrong. And at that time, it was not a sin to cast the first stone. It's literal. You know, some people point to cast the first stone as saying something wrong, like you're casting stones. And that holds some weight, but this was a literal death penalty, you know, like our electric chair. Um, but anyway, what we must know is that, you know, um, the, I believe it was Jews, but whoever wanted to, to stone the woman, it wasn't really about the stoning. They did not care. They were against Jesus Christ because they did not believe who he was and they were jealous of him. They wanted to catch Jesus at fault. So Jesus is, you know, the Messiah, the Savior. What they were going to do was try to trick him into saying the wrong thing. They were real slick about it. You know, they brought the adulterous woman and the law of Moses requires you would be stoned to death. But what they did not care about her faith, that they cared about catching Jesus in a lie. And if Jesus was wrong at any time, it would um, prove that he's not who he says he was. So if, if he said, yes, stone her, they would say, you're not a savior. You're going to allow us to you know, stone her, but you call yourself a savior, the savior. And if they said, no, if Jesus said, no, don't do it, then they would say he's against God because the law of God says that he is to be put to death. So it was a lose-lose situation, okay? But Jesus, you know, what he had said was um, he without sin cast the first stone. See, God was the only one who could have, um, you know, he could have stoned everybody there. Jesus could have did it. You know, our sin is the wages of death, you know, not just um, adul adultery. Um, you know, Jesus could have stoned everybody there. Um, so just as the woman was worthy of death for her sin and adultery, so were the Jews, you know. So Jesus, he, you know, he answered their questions with, with the, um, you know, he got them back. By, you know, your your sins are just as worthy as this as this adulterous woman. Okay, so that covers one part. You know, what the cast first stone really means. But what also some people would take out of context, you know, living, you know, living in sin and things, and how Jesus then told the adulterous woman. Well, this they don't mention, you know, um, you know, just how he let her go. But they don't mention that, you know, he told her go and sin no more. Now it's not the fact that she never sinned again, but you know, Jesus was saying, you know, um, you know, put this away, just like we need to put our sins away. So, uh, you know, that story needs to be, you know, rightly divided, just like all the rest of the word. John seven twenty four. 
probably should have started here, but when it's as clear as day, this is Jesus speaking. He said, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Okay, now there's, um, you know, we don't judge by the flesh. Um, that's exactly what he's saying. Judge righteous judgment. That's what we do. You know, it shouldn't be, you know, opinions and, and things. You know, it should really be Holy Spirit led. A lot of it's common sense, you know, just how I mentioned the, you know, would you let a, um, you know, you know, crack addict child molesting, you know, felon, basic child, you know, some of that's common sense, you know, it's not, you know, maybe they could do a good job, you know, I'm not talking about like past sins, you know, like you were this, you know, and that's still your choice if, you know, I don't trust you, you know, to do that, but it should be righteous judgment. There's a verse, um, I don't know where it's located, but Jesus was speaking on, um, you know, judge not, you should not be judged. But he's just saying, you know, he wasn't saying not to judge, because here we see in these verses, you know, we're judging is biblical. You know, he's saying, you know, don't judge hypocritically. You know, the way you do judge, you expect to be judged that way as well. Um, so, you know, you have to put the word together. You know, it doesn't contradict. So, yes, um, judging is, is biblical, um, and the main point is it should be uh, righteous judgment, you know, led by the Holy Spirit, in line with the Word, which it will be, you know, the Holy Spirit wrote the Word, Jesus wrote the Word, you know, in line with God, and, um, you know, don't judge in condemnation, like, you know, making someone feel um, bad, you know, just putting them down. Don't judge hypocritically, like um, you're without sin, you know, just to tell someone, hey, this is, you know, sin, you know, rebuke, you know, we hold each other accountable, but don't do it like, you know, when you have a complaint in your eye, you know, like, like um, you know, you're above, you know, Christ or, you know, prove yourself, you know, that person rebuking you, correcting you should be rebukable and speakable as well. The Bible says that the meek, um, I believe these are the words, but in, in so many words it's saying, you know, it's in Proverbs, I believe, that the meek, they love um, correction. And, you know, the flesh hates correction. It's not just that. It just feels good. Um, you know, we're just ready. Like, man, I can't wait to be corrected. I can't wait to stand for somebody. Maybe. No, it's the fact that you've grown. You know, God loves who he tells who he um, chastises. There's a chapter in Hebrews where it talks about how God deals with us as sons. You know, he reproves us. And, you know, improvement can hurt and, you know, be tough to swallow, but it's for our own good. And, and that's where the don't judge comes in because, you know, people take it as hate and, you know, condemnation and hypocritical. You know, it's not what they want to hear. Um, one more thing I wanted to touch on is in 1 Corinthians 2. No, well, it's actually 5, chapter 5. Sorry about that. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm starting in verse 9. It says, I wrote unto you an epistle, and not only with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or the idolaters, for then must ye need, needs go out of the world. But no, but now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or extortioner with such a one. No, not to eat. For what have I to do with them also that are without? Do you not judge them with, or, that are within? But them that are without, God judges. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that person.